Hi, I'm Dylan and welcome to my running YouTube channel. Today I'm giving you the backstory behind the brand Hoke One One and how they've progressed from making prototypes like this to product like this. Hoke One One, which is now known as just Hoke, was founded by two former Salomon employees, Nicholas Mahmoud and Jean-Luc Dier. The duo have a background in mountain trail running and adventure racing and in the late 2000s they'd envisioned footwear that allowed them to descend steep and rugged French terrain more effortlessly and forgivingly than what traditional running shoes offered. At this time there was a strong minimalistic footwear movement and about one third of running shoes in the market were minimally cushioned. Nicholas and Jean-Luc couldn't help but notice that other sports weren't adherent to minimalism. In mountain biking for instance, wheels were in fact getting bigger and mountain bikes overcame rough terrain with thick tires and shocks. In the skiing world, skis were oversized to give you a sensation of floating. And the duo saw these characteristics very relevant to the type of running they themselves were doing. So decided to design their own footwear under a brand that incorporated these concepts. Quite interestingly, in the early days of Hoka, the duo would cut off the soles of their old Salomon shoes and attach their new midsoles to the shoe to test their concept out. But aside from this, the DNA of their new brand was easy to notice. Firstly, their shoes would have oversized midsoles that would have a lot more cushioning underfoot than your typical running shoe. And your foot wouldn't sit on the cushioning, it would sit in it so that your foot is cradled to be kept transversely fixed. Their shoes also aided a good base of support by having a broadened outsole to give you an oversized footprint. Hoka's would also mimic a rocker shape similar to a wheel, which promotes a fast turnover despite having a thick sole. Underfoot, their shoes are soft and forgiving, but rigid to bending stiffness, which allows the shoe to get that rolling rocking chair effect. The biggest innovation the brand were able to achieve was developing a super light foam, which essentially allows this design to even be possible. Their foam has a great cushioning to weight ratio and essentially allows the shoe to be twice as cushioned as a traditional running shoe despite weighing pretty much the same. And from this concept, the name Hoke Ona One was born, which translates from Maori meaning to fly. Prior to Hoka, there was a brand called MBT manufacturing well-cushioned rocket shoes. But they weren't able to produce performance running shoes or shoes with soft midsoles. So what Hoka developed was pretty unique, game changer in fact. And as we'll discuss shortly, it had a massive influence on the footwear industry as a whole. Hoka's first commercial running shoe, the Mafate, was a great success. People loved it, so much so that they began wearing it on the road. So Hoka birthed their first road specific shoe, the Bondi B, which was essentially the Mafate minus its trail specific outsole. Hoka the brand began resonating with all categories of runners. Novice runners enjoyed it, podiatrists recommended it to clients, and ultra runners validated it and soon the brand began picking up a lot of momentum. While the product was novel and growing nicely, Hoka were criticized for looking like clown shoes or moon boots, and I'm sure you can understand why. Part of the problem was that consumers weren't used to seeing chunky running shoes, but that sort of sorted itself out over time as consumers got desensitized to Hoka the brand. The other problem was that Hoka didn't adapt the most uh, contemporary silhouettes and colorways. This is something that Hoka have drastically improved on, so much so that they're now a fashionable and edgy brand. Today Hoka have and are continuing to see significant growth and gain in market share and have significantly influenced the market trend. Shoes are more cushioned than ever before and almost all major running brands have a Hoka-esque running shoe in their lineup. Unlike the minimalistic footwear movement which had a quick rise and fall, uh, maximalist footwear isn't as much as a movement as it's a progression of running shoe tech as cushioning foams are lighter than ever before which enable these maximal designs. So they're not going anywhere anytime soon. It's difficult to know exactly what Hoka's true market potential is because it's growing so rapidly. 
but it's safe to say that it's here to stay. The upswing of Hoka is largely a result of the brand being able to accommodate for all categories of runners. Whether you're a pregnant runner, a injured runner, a young, old, overweight, underweight runner, the brand has got you covered. And when we're seeing which brands are growing the quickest at the moment, the likes of your Hokas, your Brooks, your Sockneys, these are the brands that are accommodating for all categories. And because there's been a flock of new runners entering the market, the brands that can accommodate for these runners are likely the brands that are going to grow the quickest. Thanks for watching my video on the evolution of Hoka the brand. I'm off for a run. I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.